In this video, I will show you how to get traffic to your website with these 12 steps. And get ready for a hack that will help you get even more visitors and engagements with your content. The first step is to establish your presence on Facebook. Oh, and don't worry, I will not tell you to spam on social media. We all hate this, but you can leverage your own social media accounts. So number one is Facebook. Obviously, Facebook is the biggest of all social media sites. And here you can create your own business page as well as create your own Facebook group. To create your own page, click on your profile and then you will see here on the left the option to create a new page. Here is my page for AnastasiaBlogger.com site. I'm sharing links here to my YouTube videos and to my blog posts. Hosting your own Facebook group can be also very beneficial because as a group owner, you are the one who can share your links and content freely. And you can set the rules of the group so that the members of the group don't spam in your community. You want to share your content on social media, not only to get the visitors to your site, which of course is great, but also to give positive social signals, which will help your content rank better in Google SEO as well. Number two is LinkedIn. If you think that LinkedIn is only a place to keep your portfolio and find jobs, you are wrong. For many websites in business-related niches, especially LinkedIn, is a great platform for driving high-quality traffic. I can show you with this free Google Chrome extension from SimilarWeb, you can check how popular is each platform we're talking about today. So LinkedIn gets 1.6 billion monthly visits worldwide, of which, of which about 30% are users based in the United States. So if you do get traffic from LinkedIn, it's usually easier to monetize it with display ads, with affiliate products, even with your own products. So you can start a LinkedIn page associated with your website uh, or your brand, just like on Facebook, and you will be like on an additional blogging platform there. You can share links to your content, you can add hashtags, and people can follow your company page or visit your website from here. Remember that on LinkedIn, people can do a search and your content can be found, for example, if someone uh, used a filter post, something like this. Usually the posts that will show up over here, they are in the long format articles. Just click on this uh, write article button and add here your text and images. You can write shorter versions of your content already published on your site or even just copy the full article from your site. And I know you might be worried about duplicate content, but really you shouldn't because you first published this content on your site and Google already indexed it and it knows it was the source of the content and it won't affect the rankings of your original post. You want to publish on LinkedIn your text with lots of your internal links that are going back to your website. That's the whole purpose. Number three is Twitter. I'm pretty sure you know what is Twitter and if you don't have an account there, you should create it. Whenever you have a new post on your site, you just go on here on Twitter and share a link to your post. Make sure that you use some hashtags relevant to the topic of your post and you can do just a quick research about trending hashtags on Twitter. For some niches, especially for tech, Twitter is a great traffic source and think about, uh, in the, uh, about it this way. As a beginner, you need to share your content as much as possible on every platform because even if you get about 100 visitors from each of these platforms, multiplied by 12 sources we're going to cover today, and it's over a thousand website visitors, which is great for a brand new site. So the next one is called Tumblr. If you don't know about this platform, let me show you. It gets about 229 million monthly visitors and what's more important, it's especially popular in the United States and Canada, which means great RPM, revenue per thousand of visitors to your site, so you can monetize it well with ads. Now, let me show, show what happens here. I have like a blog over here and you can simply share your links and again, use hashtags like on all social media. I mostly share here links to my YouTube channel and uh, sometimes to my blog posts as well. Now, remember, I promised to show you a cool hack that can help you get more clicks and engagements with your content on social media. Time to share it with you. Now, you notice that when I publish links on any of the social networks, an image associated with each post will show up. 
The problem is that you have to set this preview image for every page on your site if you want these pages to be saved with an image. For example, I tried, I tried to save on Twitter a post from this site and see what happens. There is no image at all. This kind of post will not get much attention in the feed because there is just text on the post uh, title. E-commerce stores also face the same problem. See, I tried to share a page from a t-shirt store on LinkedIn and there is no image at all attached to this link. This happens more often than you can imagine because as a website owner, before you save something on any platform, you will likely do your best to add a preview image even if you have to do it manually sometimes. What really matters is how easy it is for other users to share a page from your site with a decent image. You can solve this problem once and for good thanks to the sponsor of today's video, MugshotBot. Just go to mugshotbot.com and you will see some examples. This is how pages from the site looked when shared before they used MugshotBot and here is after, a large image with light background, that was generated as a preview image and it automatically added the title and the description of the page which makes it much easier to notice this post in your Facebook feed or on any other social media site. You can click here to get started for free and try how this will work on any page of your website. Insert here the URL of your page and then the tool will instantly add the title and description and your domain name to the preview image. Here below, you can choose one of the templates that will define how your preview image might look. For blogs like mine, I like the two up template because it can either bring the image from the, from the page or I can easily upload here something like my profile photo or my website logo and it will show up on every pre preview image. Now, this team template is the best for e-commerce sites. It shows the product photo and the price. You can also choose either the light of, or the dark color scheme. And actually the dark scheme might make your posts stand out even more in the feeds, in the social media. And you can change the color that's used for the accent border, for the website name and background pattern tint. And there are some options that you can play with that will change the background pattern. Uh, it's very subtle difference, but it's good to have some options here, right? Now, the next step is to copy this code to your site to make this preview work every time any user tries to save this page on any social media. You click here and you will get several options on how to technically add this to your site. So the easiest way, in my opinion, is the second option. It's when MugshotBot will host your images, saving your time by skipping any manual downloads. So you can copy the following tags and paste them into the head section of your HTML code. And I have to mention that if you use one of the most popular SEO plugins on your WordPress site, the plugin will likely add a similar code and it would create a conflict with Mugshot. However, the problem with those SEO plugins is that you have to manage manually upload the preview image for every page and often it means that you have to create an image of the right size for each platform uploaded to your media library and then manually select that image in the open graph settings in the SEO plugin for that particular page, again different for every platform. It's a lot of manual actions which you can totally skip if you use Mugshot Bot Pro instead. Uh, but in order for Mugshot Bot Pro to generate image previews automatically, you will need to make sure you disabled Open Graph in your SEO plugin settings. For example, uh, this is how easily you can do it in Yoast SEO plugin. So if you are a blogger or an online shop owner, Mugshot Bot will help you easily add dynamic link preview thumbnails to your site's pages. This way, when links to your site are shared on the internet, a nice on-brand image with useful information can be shown instead of a generic picture. All the steps that I've shown you so far you can do for free with Mugshot, but it will work for one page at a time, for any page that you added here. If you'd like this to work dynamically and automatically on any page of your site, you might want to try the paid version of Mugshot Bot. Likely, you can use my exclusive code Anastasia to access the paid features of the platform for free and for entire three months. 
There is a forever free version of Mugshot bot, but some templates are only available if you upgrade to Pro, which is anyway rather cheap with $9 a month or $89 a year. Again, if you try the Pro version for the first three months, you can use my coupon code Anastasia. Check the link to the mugshotbot.com in the description below. Now, step number five, start sharing your content on Pinterest. Now, if you've been on my channel more than once, you probably know that I'm big on Pinterest. When I started my blog, it was the main traffic source. I was getting about 93% of my traffic from Pinterest back then. And even now, after five years of blogging, when my domain authority has grown and Google has started ranking some of my content better, I still get about 50% of all my traffic from Pinterest. So if you never use Pinterest, keep in mind that this platform gets about 1 billion monthly visitors and 41% of the audience currently is in the United States. You should know that the audience from the United States is the most desired for all content creators because in terms of monetization, you can get the highest revenue per thousand of visitors, RPM, if you have a lot of US-based visitors. So Pinterest is a rare platform that works as a combination of social media and a visual search engine. Every pin that you create can be linked to a specific page on your website. And this currently works for standard image pins and for video pins, but for idea pin links are not yet available on all accounts. This is still in beta on limited number of accounts, but I heard rumors that Pinterest is going to roll them out to all users. So you first will need a vertical image. I will create those uh, really quickly in Canva. You can start your forever free Canva account using my link anastasiablogger.com slash Canva. So you will find in Canva lots of templates. Just search for something like Pinterest pin and you will get a ton of vertical image templates. You just need to change your background and text overlay uh, to fit something to your topic. Let's say I have this image downloaded from Canva. I'll just show you how it's fast to create a pin. You will go here to Pinterest and click create. Now upload your image and then you will just need to add your pin title, pin description and the destination URL. You can copy all of this from your post title, from your description, your SEO description for the post and the URL is over here. So you see, this is my account. I get 10 million monthly viewers plus on Pinterest. I get about 80,000 outbound clicks to my site per month from Pinterest. And if you're not leveraging this platform now, I don't know what you're waiting for. Pinterest has a social and a search aspect to it. And so you need to know how Pinterest SEO works. I teach about it in my free Pinterest masterclass. I'll give you a link up there and in the description below. Now, step number six, the next platform is Instagram. You probably know that you can only add links to Instagram stories, not to the post. And stories, they last for only 24 hours. But you could also solve this problem if you use Smart Bio that's integrated with Tailwind Scheduler, for example. It's my social media schedule that I use for Pinterest mainly, but it also is great for Instagram and Facebook. And for Instagram, it allows you to schedule a regular post on your account and make a note that users should check the link in bio. And in the bio, your link would go to Smart Bio. While Tailwind allows you to schedule an automatic uh, update of the link to the latest post in your Smart Bio, and it happens at the time when your post on Instagram goes live. The next platform is Reddit and also Quora. And Reddit and Quora are these two powerful social media sites that can be used to drive free traffic to your website. Now, Reddit is a site where people ask questions, they can share news and discuss topics of, of their interest in an online community, community setting. So on Reddit, what we need to do is create a subreddit about the topic that you cover in your site. For instance, I created one using my brand Anastasia Blogger, but if it was taken, I would have to use something that simply includes my main focus keyword. Now you have a community around your niche or topic and other people can join. What you can do now is every time when you have a new post on your site or a new YouTube video, what you will do is just share a link to it on Reddit. You will just choose your subreddit and then post it. 
What's nice about Reddit is that you also have an internal search engine on Reddit. So if someone uh, is searching for your topic, for your keyword, they could find your content right here. So obviously, I recommend you to have your profile picture added or your brand logo so that your account looks legit. And now the second step is to go and search for subreddits or communities related to your niche. Say, I wanted to find something about blogging uh, related to my niche. You should search for something related to your topic. And in case, uh, in my case, I can find here communities with tens of thousands, sometimes even with hundreds of thousands of members. So what you need to do now is just start joining these communities so that you can start interacting with members inside these and make your posts, answer questions and attract people to your website indirectly. And by the way, Reddit gets 1.7 billion visitors per month and on average people spend about 9 minutes per visit on this site. So it's a very engaged platform and people really spend time on it. And you can see here in the country distribution, really close to 50% of Reddit audience is from the United States. So it's a high quality traffic as well. And you can see then it goes to the United Kingdom, Canada and Australia. The next platform is Quora.com. Let's open the site. So Quora is a question and answer platform where users can ask questions, get answers from experienced members of the community and learn more about various topics. In Quora, your first step is to create a Quora space. It's like a community inside the platform. Here you can safely publish your own articles, post your links, whatever you wish, because it's your space. Here you will go to give a name to your space. Again, think of something that includes the focus keyword or at least your brand name. And then you can add a short description with some relevant keywords again related to your niche. Then click create. Now we can skip sending invites to your contents and we will see that we have here like a page inside Quora. You can add here your brand logo, a banner. You, you are the admin of this page. And by the way, you can also monetize pages on Quora if you want. But now you can start writing a post on Quora. Just take a short description of something in your blog post on your site and then add a link to the full post, something like this. So this is how you can get started with traffic from your Quora space. Now, the next thing you will do in Quora is search for questions related to the topic of your post. So check something. In my case, I will search for something about Pinterest marketing. And now you can check the posts that are already doing well on Quora, so you can get some content ideas uh, for your own site. But even more importantly, you can open these links and add some value. For example, I found this thread here and people already gave some responses, but in my opinion, the question was about using some automation tools to make pinning on Pinterest easier. And none of the answers suggested that. So I gave this tip here and I also suggested that they could read my full article on the topic. Now you can get traffic by answering questions on Quora 2. The next traffic source you can use in, is your own email list. If you're not building an email list because you don't have anything to sell, you're still leaving a ton of money on the table because you could be getting returning visitors to your site. For example, I like this food blog called Wholesome Yum. I signed up for her list to get more recipes. She sends me emails almost every day. I won't remember to visit her site daily, but since she sends me a reminder, when I want to cook something, I get to the emails and I get some new recipes, recipe ideas here. Now I'll also go to my own ConvertKit account. It's the email provider that I use and these are my broadcasts. And see here, I often get hundreds. Here you go. On average, about 500 clicks from one email. And these are 500 visitors which wouldn't have gone to my site this month have I not studied my email list. And let's make the math together. I send at least uh, four newsletters a month. And if we only count those emails, it's about 500 by four. It's about 2000 visitors to my site per month just from the weekly emails. But I also have several email sequences where people can get an automated uh, series of emails from me. And of course, every email has links to my uh, blog posts and to my videos on YouTube. 
In my case, I use ConvertKit. It gives you very high open rates compared to say something like MailChimp. And you can create advanced automations and email sequences in ConvertKit. You can start your free account. I'll give you a link to ConvertKit in the description below. Step number nine is SEO with Google. Now, Google SEO on or search engine optimization is definitely one of the most advanced ways to get traffic to your site. But luckily, these days, we have lots of tools that help you do keyword research and even write or even optimize the content for us or with us, better to say. For keyword research, you can use browser extension, something like Keywords Everywhere, and it will show you search volume for anything that you searched on Google, and it will show you a bunch of related keywords and search volume for them too. And this is a good start for creating your content plan or to outline your article. But then you can also use one of the famous and popular AI SEO tools. Some tools like Jasper AI will help you write the content. Other tools like RankIQ or Surfer SEO could give you suggestions on the keywords missing in your article, and they will give you ideas on subheadings in the post as well. And I personally tried and used all these tools that I mentioned, and they're great, but eventually I decided to stick with one called Neuron Writer, which is a combination of these two functionalities. It helps you optimize with keywords, and it also has an integrated AI writer. And it's very affordable to compare it to other AI SEO tools. So currently I use Neuron Writer. You can get a link to it um, in the description below and actually to anything else that I mentioned so far in this video. Number 10 is YouTube. For me, YouTube is also a great traffic source to my website. I think YouTube audience should be considered as a more warm audience if you compare it to say Google or Pinterest traffic, because people who have seen some of your content on YouTube, well, like you, for example, watching my videos, don't you feel that you already know me a little bit better than if you just clicked uh, on a random link in Google search and found my blog post there? But if you came from YouTube, you are the prime audience. And even though the volume of my YouTube traffic is not as big as from Pinterest or Google, the quality of this visit is much higher. You can even see here the bounce rate is a lot lower for my YouTube traffic. And the time that users spend on the site is four times higher than for my Google and Pinterest traffic. And of course, on Google or on Pinterest, people just click on the link to the image and they instantly land on your site. But on YouTube, people first will watch some of your videos. So it's harder to get people to click from YouTube to your web or to your website. But you know that I always give additional links to the tools and resources in the descriptions below my videos. So that's how you can get traffic from YouTube. And you should also remember that YouTube belongs to Google. So for many keywords that are hard for you to rank um, with your website, especially if it's new, you could try to rank for them with YouTube videos. And then people could go from your YouTube wherever you want to send them, be it your website or some affiliate products that you promote. And with YouTube, you can basically get premium positions on the top of Google search results page. And this is free traffic. Another traffic source you probably didn't think about is your own website. Yes, you definitely should leverage the power of interlinking on your website. One way that many beginners online ignore is adding links to relevant articles right into the text. You can do it manually, but I like to use a free plugin called Link Whisper that finds all the best opportunities for internal links in my existing content, and it helps me add the links with just a few clicks. It automatically finds the text to link from in the post, and I just approve it, and it already has the URL of the destination page. I just need to click, paste, and link is inserted. The next way of getting traffic is guest posting. It means simply publishing your articles on other people's websites. So many sites will allow you to post an article for free, and you can just get high quality backlinks and free traffic, but you need to invest your time and effort into writing very high quality articles so that they see that you are providing real value to their audience. So how do you find the sites that can accept guest posts? Well, just follow me here. I will open Google and I will type write for us and then the focus keyword for your niche. Now we have a list of sites that accept guest posts in the business niche. 
just go ahead and check what are their requirements and send them over your guest boats. So here you go, this is your plan to grow traffic to your website for free. You noticed I'm getting a ton of Pinterest traffic. If you want to know what works in the Pinterest algorithm this year, open that video up there and I'll see you there.